Fallout 3 is perhaps the most interesting game in the entire franchise. It marks the end of an era, as well as a rebirth. It's divisive. The most divisive title in the franchise. You may think that title would belong to 4 or 76, but you'll find a lot of classic fans agreeing with Fallout 3 fans about the shortcomings of those two games. Fallout 3 brought the franchise at the brink of extinction and put it on the map of mainstream, but not without a lot of heat along the way. Let's talk about Fallout 3. It's a pretty well known story at this point, but a brief history. Fallout 3 was originally going to be developed by Black Isle, going under the codename Van Buren. It got pretty far too, but Black Isle's parent company, Interplay, began to suffer financial hardships and sold the rights to develop Fallout 3 to Bethesda in 2004. Bethesda began working on it that same year, but the bulk of the work waited until The Elder Scrolls Oblivion was completed. By this point, Bethesda had a good handle on Gamebryo and played to their strengths to develop the next Fallout title. And as the years passed, Interplay went bankrupt and sold the entire IP to Bethesda by 2007. Fallout 3 was released October 28, 2008. 10 years after Fallout 2. Fallout 3's gameplay is highly reflective of Bethesda's adopted style. The first person RPG with a number of choices and possible specialized builds. Fallout 3 has been called Oblivion with Guns, and there's some amount of truth in that statement. After all, Fallout 3 shamelessly uses the DNA of Oblivion to function, but that's not really a bad thing. While one could feel Oblivion in its functionality, it does feel unique as well. Part of that is the fallout paint that's coated over it. Special, skills, energy weapons, power armor, and creatures that come from the original games. It's actually fairly interesting how well Fallout 1 and 2 translated over to this engine. Some of my fellow classic fans may disagree with me, but I actually do think, on a purely technical level, it just works. Skills that affect how well you interact with NPCs in the world, perks that can help you in combat and dialogue, reputation that can also affect dialogue, it all translates pretty well into the first person space. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the important bits has been casualized. Speech checks that tell you the speech checks and wave markers can really pull you out of the experience. Super mutants and death claws having no damage resistance is kinda jarring. Being able to take out dudes in power armor with starting gear is also pretty questionable. And a lot of these perks are very, very boring. Yay, skill points. And then there are things that are Fall 3's own problems not being able to aim down the sights, hit registration, especially in VATS, is a mystery at times. And as a personal one, I really dislike level scaling. That's just me, really dislike it. But more than anything else, getting Fallout 3 to run well on a modern PC is a lot of trouble. Some people have luck just using the good old games version, which is what I did, but even then it crashes a lot. I had to throw in so many compatibility mods just to get Fallout 3 to go from crashing every 10 minutes to just crashing once an hour and it crashed at least 60 times from start to finish. It was a nightmare capturing all this footage. Ah, but that's a problem that developed over time. It wasn't an issue upon release, though they could try to do something about it today. Regardless, when it does work, it's a rather purely fun game. Explore the wasteland while making more choices and engaging in combat with energy weapons in a 3D space is, well, fun. Of course, that's not the only thing to consider. Lord of the Bethesda, Darth Tadius, stated that Fallout 3 used a lot of the source materials, including the original games and the Fallout Bible, paying extra attention to Fallout 1 in terms of tone. And I can see where they're going with Fallout 3. It's certainly more grim, though done in a different style than that of the original Fallout. Fallout 1's dreadfulness is played much more in the background, while Fallout 3's dreadfulness is right in your face about it. The original Fallout uses this incredible ominous track and dry desert environment to give you a constant sense of dread and that feeling that something is out to get you. Fallout 3 focuses rather heavily on prop placement, usually pre-war skeletons and what I'll refer to as decorative corpses in terms of raider camps. It's not exactly a bad design change, but I do feel the different ways of trying to showcase dread gives different types of feelings surrounding dread. Fallout's background dread can give a certain uneasiness, while Fallout 3's forefront dread tells you what to expect. Now, not just comparing Fallout and Fallout 3's dreadfulness, how dark the atmosphere is something that needs to be discussed, because they certainly tried to make it dark. Murder, naturally, 
but a strong focus on subjects like drug use, cannibalism, and slavery. None of which is unfamiliar territory for the series, but I do suppose a change of perspective, in the most literal sense, is important. It's not just reading text after all, you hear them speak, and that can severely impact how dark something is, if it wasn't for the fact that you hear the same cartoony old man voice over and over. But we'll talk about voice acting in a bit. It really does become unintentionally funny, as do some of the incredibly over-the-top evil choices you can have. Blowing up Megaton, for instance, is so extreme that it feels a little silly. Maybe that was intended. And then there's the bounty hunters that will chase you down for being too good or too evil. I don't know. But at the same time, this so evil is silly thing has its own charm. I mean, one of my favorite evil actions of Fallout 2 is literally ripping a child's doll in front of him. Just because of how dumb it is. But I can certainly get the enjoyment of it. It just really depends if it's meant to be taken seriously or embraces how clammy it is. Moving on to towns and settlements, Fall 3's cohesiveness is broken much like Fall 2's. Everything is so wildly different from each other. Megaton, Rivet City, and the Underworld are fine, but all the others just feel like they're from different games. Not even just a Fallout game, but a different game entirely. Particularly Erifu, The Republic of Dave, and Big Town. Let's talk about music. Personally, I feel Fall 3's ambient music is honestly rather forgettable. Legitimately, the only track I can actually remember is the title screens. But I cannot say the same thing about the radio music. The radio is probably the best innovation Fallout 3 has brought. You have excellent pieces of music from the past brought to a new generation, such as I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire, which was the attended Inkspot tracks for the original game, by the way. Or another example, but repeat. The whole selection is undoubtedly modeling itself at the original Fallout using Maybe in its opening. Now, character and voice acting in Fallout 3 was... varied. Fallout 3 was the first Fallout game to have everyone voice, but also everyone voice with varying degrees of talent and a lot taking on many roles. Some were excellent, like Liam Neeson, who played James. You've got a goat to take. Then there's the voice of people who aren't exactly bad, but you hear them so often it gets grating such as Paul Eating playing the aforementioned old man voice. The Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war-ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however. But the Institute's affairs are none of your concern. Your undeveloped mind couldn't even begin to comprehend what we've accomplished. Some characters were actually fairly interesting. Personally, I like Jericho and wouldn't have mind to learn more about him. There ain't much to tell. He used to live out in the wastes. He was a real bastard back then. But I've put all that behind me. Fox is a curious case. But besides being overpowered with Broken Steel on, I found his voice direction to make him a chore to listen to. While I may be attended, having him sounding buzz while talking to me just makes me not want to lug him around. He's not a bad character, but it really is his voice direction for me. As unpopular as an opinion that may be. Either you are quite real, I am going quite mad! Fall 3's story is perhaps the most controversial thing. The Brotherhood changes are a definite hot topic as well as the presence of super mutants in the Enclave. It often is accused of lazily using the original assets while changing everything about them. In many respects, Fall 3 is an abridged version of the first two games. After all, it's about a vault dweller trying to bring purified water to the people while trying to fight super mutants and also has to find a Gek and stop the Enclave. It really is a mix of Fallout 1 and 2 story. It's actually a pretty great story if you don't know about Fallout 1 or 2. I can vouch for it. I was loving it when I was first introduced to Fallout 3. But when you're aware of it, the magic really does wear off. Still, I don't particularly blame Fallout 3 for the story. Yes, it feels fairly lazy, but I often found myself just seeing Fallout 3 for what I think it truly is, an introductory title. It's meant to introduce all the swarms of the new players to the franchise. You're supposed to learn about Fallout and its elements through it. The Brotherhood, Super Mutants, Enclave, Ghouls, Deathclaws, all of it. It brought in all these things to teach what their interpretation of Fallout is. And it was successful. It brought Fallout to the mainstream. All these new players have gotten their knowledge off of Fallout 3. Is Fallout 3 worth playing? Personally, I'm surprised if you haven't played it yet. If you can get it on a stable device, or like messing with mods long enough to get this done, then sure, it is. 
It was, for better or worse, the revolutionary title that changed things up. I want to tell you something now. It's important, so listen closely. This place, this vault, it's not perfect, I know. But it is your home. 